Hi everyone, Jessica Pocat, the track announcer here at Parks, joined with Chris Griffin of the PTHA. Now for folks at home, what does PTHA stand for? Yeah, PTHA is much easier to say, right? Pennsylvania Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association. We do a great job of being on the backside, making sure that the owners, the trainers, the jockeys, uh, the horses are well taken care of on the backside here in beautiful Ben Salem at Parks Racing. Um, so we do our part on the backside, Jeff Matty, the entire team, and I'm happy to be here representing and, and hang out with you for a little bit and talk about the great racing action that we've got on the track and also off the track on the backside. And welcome to On the Rail. We are going to give you a behind the scenes look at everything that makes parks so special. Behind the scenes features, some interviews, some exciting things. What do people have to look forward to? Yeah, great fan base here in Philadelphia as our audience can attest to that's watching right now. And so we've got interviews, features. We're going to talk about the great horses on the backside. You got a chance to make some history not so long ago uh, in the Pennsylvania Derby. So I'm excited to talk about that a little bit and uh, really explore the history of parks, right? Well, speaking of the history, let's learn a little bit more of what brought us here at Parks. On November 4th, 1974, Keystone Racetrack was opened in Ben Salem, Pennsylvania, taking the reins from crosstown rival Liberty Bell Park as the Delaware Valley's premier thoroughbred track. The Cotillion was first run at Liberty Bell in 1969, then moved to Keystone in 1975, carrying on its storied tradition featuring the very best three-year-old fillies in the country. My Juliet won the first Cotillion run at Keystone in 1975. My Juliet went on to become the 1976 Eclipse Award Champion Sprinter and was inducted into the National Museum of Racing and Hall of Fame in 2019. In 1979, Smarten became the winner of the inaugural Pennsylvania Derby and later became the only Pennsylvania Derby winner to sire a Pennsylvania Derby winner when Smart Guy won in 1999. Both the PA Derby and the Cotillion moved dates throughout the years looking for the perfect placement. In 2012, it was decided to run both races on the same day, the third Saturday in September. The Pennsylvania Derby and Cotillion became the marquee event, featuring two Grade 1 events worth $1 million each. Also featured on that day is the Grade 2 Gallant Bob, named for the first Pennsylvania-based horse to win an Eclipse Award. Keystone was purchased by International Thoroughbred Breeders Incorporated and was rebranded as Philadelphia Park. A new innovative way to wager, phone bet, and a pioneering cable channel were launched. In 1990, Greenwood Racing Incorporated, under the leadership of Bob Green and Bill Hogwood, purchased Philadelphia Park. Innovations continued as full card simulcasting was added. Six new off-track betting sites named Turf Clubs were open. Philadelphia Park gained national attention in 2004 as the home of Smarty Jones. The Pennsylvania bred Colts won the Kentucky Derby and the Preakness Stakes, sparking the racing world with a chance to win the elusive Triple Crown. Due to the popularity of Smarty Jones, legislation was passed in 2005. A year later, Greenwood was awarded a gaming license from the state of Pennsylvania. After renovations to the grandstand, on December 18, 2009, slot machines sang, table games rumbled with dice and cards. Parks racing continued in its revamped grandstand. On December 22, 2010, the grandstand was named Parks East, building on the tradition of the great racing from notable horses like My Juliet, Revideer, Summer Squall, Broadbrush, and Spectacular Bid. Also in 2010, Philadelphia Park was relaunched as Parks, bringing a flashy new moniker and a modern, edgy style. Behind the microphone, great voices have blessed the Ben Salem Oval, starting with broadcast pioneers Hall of Fame Jack Lamar, who narrated races from 1974 until his retirement in 1987. Keith Jones became the full-time race announcer in 1987. With over 10,000 races over a 30-plus year span and making hello his signature call, the Parks Hall of Fame announcer retired in 2020. Chris Griffin brought West Coast swagger, charisma, and enthusiasm to Ben Salem, flashing briefly across our sky. And in 2022, I was given the opportunity to become the first full-time female race announcer in the country, shattering the glass ceiling and hopefully inspiring young horse girls everywhere. Parks Racing continues to lead and innovate, bringing sports entertainment, top-tier racing to a growing audience across the tri-state area. It is the people behind Thoroughbred Racing, the owners, trainers, jockeys, all of the support staff that keep these wonderful equine athletes fit and safe, and the best sports fans in the country that keep this tradition alive. Wow, what a rich history Parks has had already, and the best still to come. Plenty more history to be made. Chris Griffin caught up with Adam Bowman, a part of our jockey community here at Parks. Enjoy this next interview. Jockey Adam Bowman didn't start getting on horses until someone suggested he should try it. I graduated high school, didn't really know what to do. I actually did a lot of construction. I graduated with like a little bit of a degree. I went to a technical school, so I was National Association of Home Builders. So I graduated, I couldn't get a job. Went interview, couldn't, everybody said, oh, you're too small, you can't do the job. And then one day my mom said, well, you know, there's a, there's a school down in Kentucky, you know, why don't you try to be a jockey? <laughs> be a jockey. I, I've never been on a horse other than a 
pony. I'm like, sure, I'm athletic. I'll, I'll give it a try. I went to Kentucky, went to the North American Racing Academy, had an interview, and uh, kind of fell in love with the horses. Adam Bowman's riding career began in Kentucky. First, I did a phone call interview with Chris McCarron and a couple of his people. And then uh, they said, oh, yeah, we'd like, we'd like you to come to Lexington. I told my dad that day. They put me on a horse, a thoroughbred, and I didn't know what to do. They said, yeah, just try to jog him down, jog him down the shed row. I said, jog him down the shed row. I, I don't know what I'm doing. So they snapped a shank on him, and they, they jogged him, and I kind of stood up on him. And, OK, it looks like we might be able to work with you, Adam. A jockey is working around the clock to get all the mounts they can for the afternoon. I love getting on horses, just just what I do. So I would just walk around, get on horses, hey, you need, you need a hand, you need help, and I just would just do my thing. I don't like to say, I want, I'm gonna work harder than you, work harder than you. No, I just, I come in, I work, I get on my horses. It's not that I'm working harder than anybody, it's just, it's what I love to do. I love coming in, I love getting on the horses. If I'm not getting on six, seven horses a day, I feel like I've had a wasted day. I just, I, I need to come in and keep busy. I can't stand here and stand on the rail. That's just not me. I just, I love to be busy. Adam Bowman is a family man. Spending time with family is number one, even if they have thoughts on his rides in the afternoon. The best thing is, is going home to my kids and my wife. I, I love, I come home from work. I walk in the door. I've been gone all day. Daddy's home. Kids come give me a big hug. That's my life. My wife says, oh, we well, you know why well, you could have done this and done that. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, I, I could have, you're right, you know, and, and the kid said, did you win today, Daddy? Did you win today? Not today, but maybe tomorrow. You know, there's always another day. Bowman likes to save ground as much as possible. I love the rail. It's just whether the horse likes to be in there. A lot of these horses, you know, some of them don't like to take dirt, so you have to take them outside. You got to get them clean. But if a horse is taking dirt and doesn't mind being down in there, that's where I want to be. They, the rail's the shortest way around the track. Sometimes it's a little heavy, a little deeper in there, so you don't want to be in there, but it is the fastest way and the shortest way around there. What's the conversation like in the paddock before the race? I like to just keep it easy in the paddock. I don't really try to stress and worry about nothing. I come down, shake your hands, and usually, you know, ask me about my family, the kids, how my day's gone, how, you know, the races are going for the day, and just take it from there. When Adam Bowman wins, what's the response like in the jocks room? I tell you what, when I win races, I don't know, because I'm on a racetrack. I, I've come back in the room a couple times and, and, and give guys a hard time. I'm not winning on favorites a lot. When I'm bringing horses in, they got a price. So I like to come back and I like I like to bust some stones, throw a little shade at some of the guys. And they, 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 you know, pound on the lockers a little bit and honk the horns. We like to have a good time and keep it loose. What a great feature on Adam Bowman. It's great to put a face to the name in the program. Yeah, he works really hard. He's a great family man, and uh, they call him the Bow Show around here. So Adam Bowman, great feature, job well done. Hey, we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to talk about some trivia and then come back with more on On the Rail. Parks app. You're in the zone. Winning is always a rush, but the money is in the moments. It's the energy of being all in, the passion of a perfect parlay, and the pure joy of a jackpot. It's another opportunity to win big every day of the week. Sign up for Bet Parks and get a welcome offer today. You play for fun, you love to win. You bet. Bet Parks.
Low Pennsylvania Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association is the advocate for Parks Racing's horsemen and has worked hard to secure better lives for the hundreds of trainers and their families that work in the thoroughbred racing industry. Our horsemen benefit from medical coverage, trainer pension plans, and increased purses. Thanks to these horsemen, racing at Parks is the very best, providing entertainment for you and the entire family. The Pennsylvania horsemen are proud to be part of the community and introduce a new generation of fans to the sport of kings. For years, the Wager Warrior has protected our tracks. Now he's on a mission to help his fellow warriors win big. Let's see how it's going. Hmm, though to Rockland has been having a good run, he's definitely going to show. Should I risk it on the win? Hey you, over here. No, down here. <gasps> Check out the past performances. I've sent them to your email. I was just trying to help. Go to penhorseracing.com slash wager warriors to get your past performances today. PA Bread, I think we've built a, a brand at this point. The state of Pennsylvania has the best breeders program in the entire United States. Angel of Empire wins the Arkansas Derby and wins it clear. Caravelle in the Breeders Cup Turf Sprint. Pennsylvania and the PHBA have the best state bred program in the country, bar none. The best Breeders' Awards and Stallion Awards in the country. Welcome back to On The Rail. Did you guys get the question right out there? We've got a lot of great things going on here on the backside. And one of those things is track announcer Jessica Paquette. She gets a chance to walk around and talk to some of the connections. So check out more about something else that goes on in the racing game. You see the stakes races, you see the live racing action, but what goes on right there trackside? It's the claiming game. What is a claim? Let's find out. Jessica Paquette with the Inside Track. Hi everyone, Jessica Pocket joined with trainer John Kirby. For this week's Inside Track, we're going to talk about claiming races, which make up a large portion of the racing landscape. So John, tell me, what is a claiming race? So a claiming race is, I mean, claiming races can range from 4000 all the way up to you know, $100,000 claiming price. And a claiming race is where the horses entered in that specific race are entered. Um, all for the same price usually uh, prior to the race and they can be bought out of that race um, for the set claiming price. So when they break from the starting gate, are they running for their old connections or their new ones? Uh, their old connections, um, they get all the purse money and then um, after the race, you know, um, if you get the horse that you dropped a claim slip on, uh, they will go back to the test barn and you can assess them further there along with the state vets. And um, if all goes well, you'll be bringing them back to their barn. Now, you claim a lot of horses. What are you looking for when you look for a horse to claim? Uh, when I look for a horse to claim, I mean, I'm a big replay guy. I go back and watch replays just to see their style and make sure they're switching their leads and you know not getting in or out and stuff like that. Um, and then past performances are big, see what kind of level they've been running against and um, what kind of competition they've been facing. Um, some, sometimes the same races can come up weaker one week than the next. Um, and then, you know, statistics available now, you know, um, buyer numbers, thoroughgraphs, sheets, uh, we, we try and look at them all. So tell me what the process is like. When do you have to drop a claim slip? What does that look like? Uh, you have to drop a claim slip. Uh, here it's 11 minutes prior to the post time um, and they will have that number up on the tote board. And horses are usually coming into the paddock um, between 15 and 20 minutes prior to their race. And um, so you have a few minute window period to look at the horse and um, make sure you know they're not wearing any funky equipment and make sure you like the way they look. and. Um, you know, that, that's kind of what I go by. Um, if I'm unsure on paper, then I'll go over and get a good look at the horse. Now, what happens if more than one person drops a claim slip for the same horse? If there are 
more than one person in for the same horse there's what's called a shake which is pretty much a lottery to see who is who gets to buy this horse um, so they'll put uh, numbered balls into a little container shake them up and whoever gets lucky gets the horse now when you get a horse claimed away from you are you ever sentimental and then try to go back and get them back absolutely um you know naturally there are some horses you get along with great and some not so much but um you know I'll, i claim a lot of horses that i lose back um you know once once you kind of get to know a horse's quirks and what they like and what they don't like it makes life a lot easier you know when you're claiming a horse you know it's it's kind of fun to figure out you know what makes them tick oh, i am jessica pocket this is john kirby and this is the inside track on claiming races Hope you got a chance to learn a bit more on Inside Track about the claiming game. I know I did. A great horse can even come from a claiming race. We've seen claimers end up into champion racehorses, and those champion racehorses, they might end up in the Parks Hall of Fame. The Parks Hall of Fame is a great addition to the great racing action that we've got, and we have horsemen and horsewomen and great horses right here in Philadelphia. So let's take a look at the Hall of Fame here at Parks. Founded as a joint venture between Parks Racing and the PTHA, the Parks Racing Hall of Fame was established in 2011 to honor the rich history of Pennsylvania's most storied thoroughbred racetrack. The Hall of Fame, located in the Parks Grandstand, honors the notable horses and their human counterparts who make up the intricate tapestry that is Parks Racing. Upon entering the Hall of Fame, you are greeted by a statue of the Commonwealth's most famous equine athlete, 2004 Kentucky Derby and Preakness Stakes winner, Smarty Jones. Smarty Jones and his Parks Hall of Fame trainer John Service took the entire country on an incredible ride, coming heartbreakingly close to winning the Triple Crown while shining a spotlight on Pennsylvania racing and breeding. From there, you walk through history as over 90 beautifully engraved plaques honor the members of the Parks Racing Hall of Fame. Trainers, such as the aforementioned John Service, who followed up his 2004 Kentucky Derby win with a victory in the 2016 Kentucky Oaks, Robert Kamak, whose horses earned close to $30 million in his career, winner of over for 1,800 races, Mark Reed and his brother, Robert Butch Reed, trainer of 15 graded stakes winners, and Kate DeMasi, the first woman inducted into the Parks Hall of Fame. Jockeys honored include Tony Black, winner of over 5,200 races, Kentucky Derby winning jockey Stuart Elliott, Jose Flores with over $64 million in career earnings, Jeff Lloyd, who rode in over 31,000 races, Joe Hampshire, earner of over $44 million in his career, and Frankie Pennington, who is approaching his 3,000th career victory milestone. Owners inducted include Someday Farm, Roy and Pat Chapman, owners of Smarty Jones, Augustine Stable, Plumstead Stables, and Salvatore Debunda. Others are honored for their special contributions, such as Parks Racing founders Bob Green and Bill Hogwood, longtime PTHA executive director Michael Belezzi, venerable track announcer Keith Jones, and writers Craig Donnelly Harris, Dick Girardi, and producer Bruce Casella. The highlight is the equine heroes that have graced the Ben Salem Oval. In addition to Smarty Jones, greats like Pennsylvania Derby winners Broad Brush and Devil Donner, 2000 Cotillion winner Jossel, Kentucky Oaks winner Catherine Sophia, and Vaquist, winners of the 2020 Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. In addition, the hall features a collection of caricatures by legendary horse racing cartoonist Peb, plus so much more. We inducted our newest members to the Hall of Fame, Chubb Wagon, owner Jack Mondell, and Parks COO Joe Wilson. Next time you come to Parks, be sure to take a trip through history at the Parks Racing Hall of Fame. Great to see all the newest Hall of Famers, our newest inductees, and uh, what better place than to stand right in front of the Hall of Fame room here at Parks? It does feel like you get to take a walk through history. And now let's get to know some of our horsemen and women a little bit with our fanatics. My mother. To be honest, my wife. Probably my wife, Ginny, but uh, hey, yeah, as, as he's standing there looking at me. But uh, Brother Mark, I followed him along, you know, I followed his footsteps a long way, a long way. Now I've surpassed him, so it's really turned out good. Yeah. Both my parents. Uh, my father, definitely. Uh, my family, my father. Oh, geez, uh, my wife. I mean, in the sport, it'd definitely be my stepfather. My mother. My father. Um, you know, I was always admired by the, the training what Scott Lake used to do. Yeah. My father. My father and my uncle who lived with us, they were hard, hard workers, man. And they made me work hard. Like I said, when I was a little skinny kid, wheelbarrowing concrete. 
They just told me you gotta work hard. My mother. Bruce Kravitz. My father. Your father. Yeah. When you open the Bet Parks app, you're in the zone. Winning is always a rush, but the money is in the moment. It's the confidence and underdogs covering, the tension before a clutch turnover, and the pride of a parlay paying off. It's another chance to win big with all day action. Plus, win your first $10 bet and get $125 in sports bonus bets. You play for fun, you love to win. You bet. Bet Parks. Racetrack Television Network brings you every race, every race from every track, every track on every screen, every, screen, every, day. every day. With monthly packages starting as low as $5, RTN gives you great value and access to more live HD streaming and race replays than anyone. Visit RTN.TV today to sign up and watch on almost any device, including Roku and Amazon Fire. RTN has packages that start at $5 per month. Every week, the team here at Parks, they get an opportunity to check out a war horse. So this is War Horse Wednesday. Hi everyone, Jessica Paquette joined here with trainer Scott Lake. It is War Horse Wednesday. This is Wagon Boss, 83 starts, 13 wins. He is 10 years old and aging better than most of us. Now, Scott, you've built your career on these old hard knocking geldings. Tell me about what makes you want to add one of them to the barn. Well, they, you know, they've always been my favorite and we just kind of baby them along a little bit, jog and get them happy and eat good. And uh, it's really worked out for us over the years. I mean, I, I just love those old horses. I love the, what they're doing. Now, what have you learned from them over the years? Because I feel like these horses with experience really teach us something every time one comes to the barn. Absolutely, patience. They, they let you know when they're ready. Uh, you just take your time with them, make them happy, and you know, they, they dictate to you what they're ready to do. Now, Wagon Boss has a big personality and clearly a penchant for snacks. He's eating a sweet potato right now. What's he like to have in the barn? Oh, he's a sweetheart. Everybody loves him. He goes to the track in the morning, has his tongue hanging out the side of his mouth all the time. He just, just big old ham. Now, my big question. Of all the old war horses you've had, who's your favorite? Uh, probably a horse named Crafty FL. The way back, he was he was a monster. At nine years old, he was still going strong. He had made 900000 at that point. Uh, he, he was just amazing. Well, thank you. This is Wagon Boss. It is War Horse Wednesday. I hope you enjoyed that feature on Wagon Boss as much as I enjoyed creating it. He is one of my favorite horses here at Parks. I know we're not supposed to play favorites. But now, next up, a little bit of girl power here at Parks with Kate Damasi. Trainer Kate Damasi has been around horses and racing for pretty much her entire life. Her career has always been on the East Coast. I grew up in Maryland and on the Eastern Shore. We had a small farm, um, and we had some horses just because my parents liked them, but they weren't big owners or anything like that. It was more just dabbling. I started in like 1984. Ran my first horse, actually it was at uh, Penn National, and it won, first time out, first timer. Yes, first time starter, <laughs> first time trainer. Kate DeMassey was at several tracks early on, and her stable made its way to parks. So I went to Delaware Park, I guess it was like in 1984 is when I started training there and I had an owner that had, you know, worked out getting me some stabling there at the time. It wasn't the same as what it is today. And then when Garden State opened in 1985, I made the jump over to there, thought I was really living the big life there, it was like Garden State. And then it was a natural jump to come over here because they were running actually um, as, a, as a team. Every trainer relies on a great team. Kate DeMassey has just that. I have a really good assistant here. She's here super early. My team's in here early. Which race would Kate DeMassey like to win? You know, it'd be really cool to win the Pennsylvania Derby, 
but I've always wanted to win the Black Eyed Susans and the Preakness for some reason, because I guess being a Marylander, it's like, those are like the two races that I, it would be nice to have a horse that could do that. What have horses taught Kate DeMassey through her career? I think the number one thing that horses have taught me is patience. If I get in a hurry, it just backfires. Um, whether that's handling a baby horse, a brood mare, or a racehorse that doesn't want to go in the gate. Patience. Um, and you have to know when to like say, I need to take a back step with this horse because it's just starting to get too much for him. What advice does trainer Kate DeMassey have for young trainers? I think the best thing they could do is work for several trainers that they consider top trainers and I would explore the country. Don't just be in one area. You know, I think a lot of people that have had the opportunity to go to California and work for some of the trainers there, maybe New York, really you can take a lot of ideas from a lot of different places. That was a great feature on Kate DeMasi, who's the first woman ever inducted into the Parks Hall of Fame, certainly paving the way for women behind her, a woman I really admire here at Parks. Yeah, really definitely seems to be a theme on today's On the Rail show, our debut, the Hall of Fame room right behind us and seeing Hall of Famers all throughout front side and back side here at Parks and, and you making history in the Pennsylvania Derby, of course. Yeah, the horses and the horse people here made it easy. Thank you everyone for joining us for our first On the Rail. If you enjoyed it, how can people join in, yeah, tune in again? Fourth Saturday every month. Make sure that you get, check us out. We're following Let's Go Racing. It's on NBC Sports Philadelphia, and I get to hang out with you a little bit more and bring you all the great racing action here at Parks.